interesting. Maybe you're going to be a, uh, you know, a, a scientist or engineer one day. It's called orbital mechanics. Uh, the spacecraft is flying at a certain speed. It's like having a ball on the end of a string, and you have to tur uh, twirl it at a certain speed such that it stays at that uh, level or that altitude or that uh, circumference around the string. So we have to fly at about 17,500 miles an hour, 28,000 kilometers per, mile, per hour, um, and to maintain this uh, distance away from the Earth. However, we're always falling toward the Earth, uh, so every now and then we have to reboost and use our jets to reboost. Over. Actually, a very funny question. We check out our, um, our mass on a momentum machine. We have two. We have one here in the Russian segment, and we also have one in the U.S. segment called Slam D. And essentially, uh, what it does is measure how much momentum is pushed after you get pushed on a spring, and how much m momentum you'll push back on that spring, and that converts it to weight. Over. Absolutely, I miss Mike Gorby. You know this. You know about him. He's my little dog. Um, and you know, one of the things about him that I miss the most is I like to take him for a walk, and I like to take him places, like to the beach or in the woods. And those things about Earth is what I miss. Even rain, I do, we don't have up here. Um, so those are the things on Earth that I miss, and that's what Gorby symbolizes to me. Over. Great question. You know, uh, we make air from water. We split hydrogen and oxygen, and that's how we get air, because obviously we get oxygen. And water is collected through condensate, so anytime we sweat or anytime there's humidity in the air, we recollect it through an air conditioning type system. And then also, urine is uh, recycled and made back into clean water. Of course, there's some extra that we but all of that process is going on up here, so it's essentially a closed system. Over. This is a great question, and we practice this at least once a month, probably more than that. We practice it here in the space station. We also practice that in the either one of the spacecraft can have a leak, and it's called a deep station. So we have procedures to put in place in case that happens. Essentially, what we would do is try to close the hatch and isolate the leak so that it didn't affect all of the station. Uh, but if worse came to worse and we had to go in our space, little spacecraft, the Soyuz, we could also close ourselves in our space suits uh, and then come back if we had to depressurize our little spacecraft. So uh, all, of, all of those measures all lead down to jumping in your space suit and, and closing the helmet and making sure you're safe. Over. Usually there are six. Right now we have only three. Uh, there are three people can ride on a Soyuz, so we have one Soyuz up here. We should be getting... But that doesn't mean so much except for the fact that in case we have emergency, somebody's in charge. Um, but for the most part, everybody does science, everybody does spacewalks, everybody does robots. okay while it's up here, but, you know, there's some things on Earth that are really yummy, like pizza, for example, and um, I think most astronauts miss having their favorite meal and their meal cooked by their mom and stuff like that, so um, it's nice to get home to see your family and friends and eat what you like to eat the most. Over. Anything that's powder will float around, so that's, you have to be careful about that. And also, we do deal with 100%, so you do have to worry about some types of products that have any types of oils in them. So it's possible, but I don't do it too much. Over.